Hey guys, this is Josh coming to you with another Sandbox Unity 3D tutorial. So today we are going to be playing around with gravity and we're going to make a little uh, gravity cube race game. So I'm going to name this project. So I already opened up, um, opened up a project. I'm just going to name it um, <coughs> Unity, or say Gravity Sandbox, or gravity sandbox Tutorial. Throw it in the Unity Games folder. <coughs> and open this guy up. So basically, we're gonna play around with the um, Unity's um, gravity uh, and physics engine, and look at how those work a little bit. And then we're gonna make a little game out of it. So first thing we are going to do is create a little scenes folder. Save our scene. Control S. Is gonna be our main scene. All right. All right. So we are going to make a a cube, and we're gonna name this cube our ground. Okay. So this is our this is our ground. I'm gonna press R, resize it, make it a little bit bigger. And about there is probably good. Alright, so now we've got our ground, and I'm going to make a couple materials so that we can be fancy and these will look nice. So, we have folders, or a materials folder, going to make two materials inside of it, and one of them is going to be red, and the other is going to be blue. Alright, and so this one is going to be red, I'm going to get a nice deep red, this one's going to be a nice deep blue, distinguish stuff, and we're going to make our ground blue, because why not, so I'm just going to drag that on there, and that's a nice, nice deep blue there, it's actually a weird blue, I don't like, it's all okay, whatever, that works. <clears throat> All right. So now we're gonna make. So I need to notice a, f a few things about this first. So um, first of all, um, our ground box spawns with a couple things: the mesh renderer, mesh renderer, which is what actually shows it. Okay, so we take that off, and all we see is this green outline. And then it also spawns with the box collider, which is if we take the mesh mesh renderer off, that's what this green outline is. It's the collider. Colliders are what actually give our objects, um, you know, geometry, something that the rest of the game can recognize. So they can either be a trigger. Triggers mean that um, in a script you can recognize that something has gone into it, or it can be it can not be a trigger, which means that it's affected by uh, gravity type stuff. Okay, and so it can collide with other objects. And yeah, so I'm going to turn the mesh render back on, and now we're going to make another object, and we're going to call this, uh, we're just going to make another cube. I'm going to bring it up a little bit. <clears throat> cool, and then <coughs> we're going to throw our red material on there, and we'll call this our layer. Okay, we'll get a tad bit smaller. That, something like that. Get a little bigger. Okay, we got our player. And so the spawns are the same thing because we just spawned um, the exact same objects: a collider, a mesh render, and you know the shader, the red shader. Okay, so let's go ahead and press play and see that nothing happens because we don't have any kind of code attached to it and. So nothing happens at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach something called our rigid body component onto our player. Now the rigid body component basically handles anything that has to do with physics in Unity. So you, it has a mass, which if you know anything about physics, mass is the um, 
is what gives something a sense of weight in an environment. And so if we set our mass to zero, then uh, can we set it to zero? We can't set it to zero. Okay, I guess it doesn't want us to set it to zero. Let's try it and see what happens. Okay, it doesn't want us to set it to zero. Anyways, um, I guess if you if you know um, if you remember anything from high school physics, you know that no matter what the weight or mass is of an object, it's always going to fall at the same rate. So, say we could um, we could make another cube, say, or we could just duplicate this. We could set this mass to five, and we could set this one to one, and then we can move this one over here and see how fast they fall. They fall at the exact same the exact same rate. So Newton's law of gravity. <laughs> so yeah. So mass doesn't affect it, but what does affect it is the actual gravity constant. So if we go into file and we go to where is it? Project settings. Go to physics. We have our gravity constant. So if you remember from high school physics, our um, gravity constant on Earth is uh, 9.81, and in Unity this is applied just in, um, just by um, pushing, putting a constant uh, negative 9.81 <clears throat> uh, directional force on the y-axis. And so what we can do to affect our gravity on our two players is by changing this universal gravity constant in our world to say negative 200. And see what happens. They fall pretty much instantly. That's a lot of gravity. Say it's set it to zero. And it's, they should just not move. Because there's no gravity on our world. Or um, we're weightless. So what if we set it to, uh, to one positive direction? It should go up, right? So let's see what happens. They're going to go up really slowly. And they're going to accelerate as they go up. Because it's gravity and it's, a, and it's a force of acceleration. Okay, so let's change it back to our 9.81 gravity constant. So our gravity feels semi-normal. Okay, <clears throat> and let's take our player, our, our second player out. And okay, so we have a couple of things. Okay, so what else about the rigid body component? Uh, it has a drag component, so that's the amount of uh, drag that's applied to <clears throat> to an object. Uh, it has uh, collision detection, it has interplay, um, and it has constraints. So say in the world, if we want it to not be able to move in the y direction, we could say we could check the freeze position in the y direction constraint, and it won't be able to move even with gravity being applied to it. So it could be useful actually really useful, so say in like, um, if you're making a 3D uh, game where a guy is running around in the world in a third person view, and you want him to rotate on the Y axis, but you don't want him to be like falling over himself and stuff, you could freeze the rotation on the X and Z axis, axis and then he's not going to be able to move from X and Z, Z axis at all. I don't know what I was trying to illustrate there, because our cube just falls straight down. But yeah. So you get the point. <coughs> gravity and, gravity and uh, physics do cool stuff. And with all of these, we're able to do things like, in scripts, we're able to add forces, we're able to add velocities, um, and we're able to use gravity to do some pretty cool stuff, which is great. Um, so yeah, and we also have uh, a bunch of other cool... We have things called uh, physics materials, which are actually, so say, we have our materials folder, so let's create some physics uh, physics materials. Physics materials are essentially they have um, properties that make them uh, do stuff like real world objects, um, objects like bounciness, or like uh, they have a lot of friction, like something like concrete or something like that, or less friction, like something like wood, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, so we can either so we can make our own physics materials, or we can import some physics materials from the um, standard assets, which is a little bit easier. So I'm going to do that. So we're going to uh, go ahead and uncheck all of this, get rid of characters, 
all that stuff, grab our physics materials, and that should be it. Import all the physics materials. Here we have physics materials. And then get rid of the standard assets. So we just have a bunch of physics materials. And so if we look in our physics materials, we see we have a lot of cool stuff. <clears throat> we have a bounciness. So bounciness has a bounciness of 1, and then a dynamic friction of 0.3, static friction of 0.3, and bounce combine maximum. And ice, very little friction, no bounciness pretty much, and then lots of friction, um, and then multi the multiply friction combine bounce combine. Max friction has, since this is a range from 0 to 1, has 1 friction and 0 bounciness and so on and so forth. So here we have zero friction and yeah. So say if we want our um, floor to be really, really bouncy, we could give it our um, bouncy material. And it would actually go on. Put our bouncy material on the on there on the collider. And I already have as a bouncy material actually now that <laughs> just realized that now it has, that's even bouncier. It's bounce and we're gonna bounce. So since that bouncy coefficient is at one, it's, it's actually probably just gonna bounce to the same exact height every single time. It's kind of boring. So if we want to go down a little bit, we could change this bouncy. Uh, coefficient down to maybe like 0.5. Try that now. Now it's not going to bounce quite as much. Alright. So, yeah. So that's pretty fun. <coughs> um, and now, we're going to make a little game out of this. <clears throat> so, let's see. We are, I have a couple scripts I'm going to import, first of all. I am going to import new acid, assets, games, uh, gravity game, assets, scripts, joy script, and... Cubes. Alright, I'm going to make a scripts full. Oh, no, didn't want to do that. Alright, so, why are you not going? I'll close you down. Okay, I'm going to make a little scripts folder. Scripts. So, both of these will be in the Unity Sandbox uh, Google Drive. Um, all, all these scripts will be in the Unity Sandbox Google Drive to download. So you can use them in games. <clears throat> and yeah, so basically you can look at the code here off to the right, a free little preview, or you can open it up in either Visual Studio or Mono Develop, whichever one uh, your Unity editor is using. But basically, uh, I'll detail these in just a second actually. We're going to reposition this so we can make a cool game. So first, I'm going to change the X rotation on the ground to 45, like this. So now we have this guy, and then we're going to move our camera back. It doesn't look quite so stupid. And we're going to change our Y rotation to 180 degrees. Move the camera back a little bit. And turn it this way a little bit. There we go. So we're going to make a little game where we're going to spawn a bunch of cubes and we're going to experiment with how we can make them bounce down and get the num max number of points possible uh, from getting them to bounce down and getting then getting points by getting to the bottom of this rank. Okay, so we have a couple little scripts here that I made for this game. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and create an empty, I'm going to call it a game manager. Okay. We're going to put our spawn cube script on this object. 
So remember, scripts don't actually work until they are on an object that's in our game. This object, all these objects in the hierarchy are in our game, and so they're actually like playing a role in the game. All this stuff isn't in our game. Yeah, these are just things we can put in our game if we feel like it. Okay? So in our game engine, we now have our spawn cubes object on it. <coughs> okay? So, we're gonna go and make a prefabs folder. Okay, so these prefabs are objects that are all the exact same. So say I want to make, so I'm gonna um, put my player in the prefabs folder. Okay, and now I can delete my player right out of the game. And <clears throat> in the prefabs folder, I have my player, and I can put as many as I want in the game, like this. And they're all gonna be the exact same thing, pretty much. Okay, I'm gonna delete those out. We have our prefabs. Our game manager, and what I'm going to do, so in the script that I put on my game manager, we have what's called a public variable. Okay, so this is it right here the public game object cube prefab. And you need to make public variables in our scripts, in our, um, in our scripts in the editor, it then asks for a game object that we can assign to it. And so we're going to put our player on it naturally. <laughs> so this is Basically what it's going to do is it's going to spawn objects when we click. But it's not going to actually because I lied. And it only does it if this is tagged as something, which we're going to add one of those tags onto. We're going to just call it spawner. Okay? So this script, you know, I'm, without getting into the script details too much, it has a check that says it will, um, if its tag is spawner, like um, spelled exactly like this, then it'll instantiate a new prefab of whatever it is. Okay, so <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and tag it as spawner, like this, so you go to, so you go to the object, then you go to tag up in the inspector, then you add tag, type it in, and then I'm tagging it as spawner. Okay, so now I click on it. It should. Oh, look, it's being my game. It's still not working. Okay. Interesting. Can you debug that real quick? Okay, figured it out. I accidentally put my player's tag as spawner, which we don't want. We want our grounds tag as spawner, so if we. Um, click on something that is tagged as spawner, then it'll spawn the cubes at those positions. So let's press play. And now, can spawn tons of different cubes. And they all have gravity. They all have bounciness. They all have tons of bounciness. So say we want to do some really fun stuff. So they're also bouncing off each other, remember, and they also have colliders. And so when I'm spawning them, they're spawning off, off of each other. And bouncing off of each other to crazy heights. Which is really fun to play with. You just keep spawning them. And if you look in the hi hierarchy, none of these guys are getting destroyed, all our players. They're just constantly spawning and probably will crash our game eventually. It might take a little bit, but CNE is pretty powerful. They're just going to keep coming. So, I also created a script to deal with that. Um, the destroy, destroy cube script. So this is actually, in order to do this, we are actually going to have to do a couple things. First of all, we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to put <clears throat> an object down at the bottom that's going to destroy them as they get to, as they get to it. <coughs> so, what we're going to do is we're going to create not an empty game object. We're going to create a cube. Okay. And rotate it uh, 45 degrees. So let's level with this. We actually want it to be 45, 90, 135 degrees, I believe. 35 degrees, that way it's perpendicular to it. And then. We can move it down. Make a really large. 
large platform where this is going to sense objects. Okay. Yeah, that should be good. I think that'll be pretty good. That's all. We want them, we, I think we want them, we want to sense them, um, they bounce off and just get to the bottom here. So, it should be good. Then we can just take off our mesh render by unchecking this, because we don't even need to see it. We just need the collider, and we need to mark the collider as a trigger. So we need to say if something goes into it, then it triggers it. Okay. And then we're just going to, um, so this will be our destroyer of players. Vicious. And we're going to put this destroy cube script on it. Destroy cubes. And it's asking for a text object, actually, because on the, in this script, it's also going to update our score because we want to be able, we want to reward players for getting getting down there. Okay, so we're going to uh, we're gonna make make a user interface actually. So we're gonna go up to our game object UI, and so the UI has all the stuff for our user um, that we can put on our user interface, and the first thing we want before anything. This is what we put everything on. We put it on a canvas, okay? So canvas is essentially this huge rectangular thingy up here. I do this. Oops. Like that. That is, that always displays in our game view. So this will always display in our game view. Okay? Which is great. We like that. <clears throat> and so we don't even need to look at it, but basically, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to rename that UI, and then as a child of it, we're going to create another 3D object UI text. It's going to be our score text. I'm gonna rename it score text. Okay, and now you can, in our game view, you can see it actually displays the text that it shows in here. Okay, so let's say, let's do score this is a little preview. So we want it to look like that. We want it to be our score. And then we have our rec transform. This is just for um, for user interface stuff. We have this little rec tra transform tool. We're going to click on it. There's lots of um, smart position stuff. So we're going to click on, we're going to actually press alt and then click up here and it's going to smart transform position it up here for us in the top right. Okay, we can just leave it like that. And there we go. So we have that on and now in our destroyer of players Object, we can go ahead and throw our text object on there because it's actually referencing it because in this script it's going to change that text for us. So, put that in there. And if you can take a look at this, oh, this will also be on the in the Google Drive. But, um, yeah. So here, text object dot text equals score plus, um, equals the text score plus our current score and it updates it for us. And you know, adds one and everything, so you can take a look at it. And with that, we'll have a coding tutorial in the future for this. But so here now, do this, and when the cubes fall down, all the way down there, they should. I guess they're not. The score is not updating, which is slightly worrying. Let's see. Destroyer of cubes. Why are you not listening? Destroyer of cubes. Destroy. Destroy cube. Aha. We need to tag our cube. Here we go. So we have a tag. So make sure you also tag your player as cube. So we need to add a tag, press cube, and go up, player, cube, save, play, now it should work. Boom, 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 and our score is going up, cool. So if we look in our scene view, all our cubes are now disappearing, because in our script, every time they hit that object down there, they get destroyed and it adds one to our score. So our score is just constantly getting up as those cubes are getting destroyed. Which is great for us. We create tons of little cubes. We do this. We also have a little timer to make and make it so 
we can't just spawn cubes uh, over and over again on this in our script. So we can go to our uh, game manager, make this timer something like uh, maybe 0, or 0 0.5 like that. This will make it so we can only spawn a cube every half a second instead of every tenth of a millisecond. So there we go, it's much slower. Still getting destroyed, still adding points to our score, still bouncing around. That's great. Let's try experimenting around with some, some of those other um, physics materials. We have a bunch of physics, other physics materials. Let's maybe try ice. So, in our ground, let's go and throw ice material on there. So ice has almost zero friction and very low and almost no bounciness if I remember correctly. So, no bounciness, very little friction. So let's see that one, how that works out. And they just slide down. That's fun. Useful. Hmm. Okay. So it depends on what you want. But so for this game, yeah. Depends on what you want um, you want for this. So we can experiment around with different <clears throat> different physics materials. We could have we could try out a max um, a max friction, which will have the fr um, friction coefficient at one, and the uh, cubes won't be able to move down at all. So actually, where is it? Game manager ground, and we could put our max friction, and then uh, press play. Still bounce. They have uh, so they still have a bounce and a bouncy coefficient. Coefficient. But yeah, we have that, and so to complete the game. Um, we don't want the players to be able to spawn anywhere on um, anywhere on the just regular plane. So I'm gonna create another cube. Uh, call it spawn area <clears throat> right up here, and rotate it same amount, 45 degrees. Get larger. There you go. And move it over here. There are other stuff. And then we can apply our spawner tag onto that and then take it off of the ground that we had before. So that way the players can't spawn on anything but this guy. Spawn object. <clears throat> and then, yeah. Then spawning. <coughs> so. I'm gonna change. so on our ground have our max friction. So I'm gonna put the um, something rubber bouncing this point five zero. So I'm gonna change our bounciness coefficient to point one bouncy. And I'll put that on. And then see how that affects it. Oh, it's because okay, we gotta change change the um, 
time the timer so it's not spawning every millisecond. So we go here, make that maybe point one, so that we can spawn spawn every tenth of a second. That way they'll just roll down. <coughs> Yeah. And now, so our score's working, <clears throat> and now we can create some obstacles for the um, for them to roll down. So we can see how they how they navigate the obstacles. So we can um, on the ground we can create cubes as child objects, and then rotate them up. Make them a little bit smaller, obviously. Like that. And then rotate them along this uh, green y axis, y -axis here <clears throat> relative to the parent. Just move them up and we can, so we can play around with that a little bit and make tons and tons of those. Make little walls. And duplicate that. Get. Rotate some more. We can make some more of those walls. There we have it. I'm gonna make all of these a lot taller. Say Q so our players can't just bounce out like they have been. And there we go. Let's try it. Try it out. Spawn our cubes up here. Watch them bounce down. Oh. That is oh the collider. <clears throat> the colliders didn't rotate with them. That's not good. So... Huh. I didn't know they did that. Box collider is triggered. Center rotation. Okay, to fix this, I think we're going to have to go into our cubes here and delete all these child objects. <clears throat> or not delete all of them. We delete these ones that are rotated. Oops. And delete them. <coughs> Create a couple of duplicates. And then we have to bring them outside of this. So they're rotating with the parent object. And then there we go. Now we can rotate them and the child object and the child objects for them colliders are gonna stay the same. Okay. 
Let me see what this one rotate it. Back. And one more. Now we have our game. Alright. Now press play. Let's see how it works. It looks like it's going good and they bounce down, collide with everything, and then they roll along the sides and eventually and eventually hit the bottom and our score goes up. Cool. Alright, so that is it for this tutorial. Check back next time for the next one. Thank you.